Good afternoon, everyone. It's exciting to be here. It's great to see all the beautiful people, beautiful faces, very keen people. I can see, you know, I can feel your energy, and that's incredible. Thanks for coming out. My name is Chinan, Chinan Dikwal. I'm an oil and gas strategist. That's what I do as a day job. Outside of that, I do lots of community stuff, so community speaking, engagements, uh, motivating in some ways, and you know, general journalism. So it's a great pleasure to be talking to you today. Quickly, shifting the paradigm, so from subvention dependence to self-sufficiency, from sub subvention dependence to self-sufficiency, what does that mean? Today, with the greatest respect, if you come to North Central, most of what we have, unfortunately, is the states, the overheads and everything are run on the charity, the benevolence, and the handouts from the center. So the federal government would sell oil, they would send you the proceeds, would sit down here, finance a government, you know, and run it generally. That is great, it's awesome. Unfortunately, what that means is you are living on borrowed time. You're not spending what you're consuming. The reality of it is you should be living on what you generate here in Joss, the funds that we generate in Joss, the ones we generate in Okene, the ones we generate in Bida, that should be what we should be living off on. Anything outside of that is a bonus. If the government sends us money, that should be a bonus. We should not be living off something handouts. Okay, so stay with me. Quick one. Guys, all of you know this, but I'm just going to illustrate real quick. Revenue, billions of dollars on one side, oil price. I just want to start to show you that. Why is it that in lots of the states that we have in the North Central today, we're having a bit of trouble? Why is that the case? Now, I'm going to plot to you the oil price, starting from there. So, guys, you can see the price of oil on the left-hand side. Oil at $110 per barrel. Good times. $110. Good times. All the way through to mid-2014, we have a big drop. About 75% of the value of oil has gone. Okay? So if you conceptualize that, if we're staying as a state where we're living on handouts, all of a sudden you have issues. So let's see what that looks like. 2002, $50 billion in the whole year. That was what we had as subvention. So the blue, okay? blue is federal subvention. The red is what we generate internally, our IGR. Make any sense? Internally generated revenue. Look at that delta, 2012. Let's go further. 2013, 2014, 2015. Given, it's an election year. It is an election year, but you get the drift. Crisis We're already in a financial crisis. You can see that very clearly. Okay, so let's go further. And then 2016, there is a big issue. All of a sudden, there is an issue. With the greatest respect, my dad is here. He has spent all his life in the civil service and has done amazing at that. But when you sit down and conceptualize and actually realize that the livelihood of people depends on that, then as a government, you have to start thinking about alternatives. What can I do right now and right here to break that debacle? Okay, so I'll go forward. I've painted a picture. You don't quit in my Afadi, I quit down more. That's a picture from here. So, now stay with me. Internally generated revenue, what does that look like? Billions of dollars, a quick comparison. So if I take the North Central, North Central Nigeria, I'm going to compare the North Central Nigeria to Lagos State. Six states in the North Central. Kogi, Kwara, Benue, Nasara, Plateau, Niger. Six states of the, in the North Central. That's what you have there in the bottom, compared to Lagos. Lagos generates 301 billion. Six states, 50 billion. Conceptualize that. Think about that for a minute. Six states of the Federation. I'm not even comparing one to one. I can't, if I put one to one, the graph is not going to work. Six states to one. So, what does this tell me? Lagos State generates six times the revenue that six states generate. Lagos generates six times the revenue that six states generate. It's 50 times what we generate in Plateau. 50 times what we generate in Plateau. Now, I'll caveat this. This is not a political point. I need to underscore it so you hear it and you understand it. Okay? Why is that the case? I'm very inquisitive, and as you can imagine, I want to understand why there's a delta. What is that delta? What's driving that delta? So the first thing, to understand that, the first thing that came to my mind is to say, okay, who are Lagos? Maybe do they have 
more people? Perhaps they do have more people. Maybe that's the case. Let's try that. So if you go further, population comparison. Does Lagos State have more people? Six states of the North Central, 18.8 million. One state, 9 million. What does that tell you? Lagos State is doing a lot more with less. Any state in the North Central is doing far less with more. There's a lot of dead weight in that red box. There's a lot of dead weight. It's like plateau is, you know, a lot of dead weight in that red box. There are lots of people not contributing anything to that economy. And that's a travesty. No central states, we have twice the human capital, twice the human capital, meaning twice the population, 18.8 relative to 9, i.e. twice the brains. We have twice the brains, but we're making significantly less money. Okay, let's go further. So the next thing, if population is not what it is, what could it be? Maybe agriculture. Maybe Lagos has more land mass than we do have in the North Central State. I don't know. Let's find out. Conceptualize. Conceptualize. Lagos State, 3,000 square kilometers. All right? Six states, 235,000. So it don't get in the she don't go in the kin name Munadish. We have the land mass. We're generating a fiftieth of what Lagos State is generating. So conceptualize that. What does that tell you? That tells you that Lagos State is monetizing every square mile, every square kilometer. Lagos State is monetizing that, it's making money out of it. Plateau State, unfortunately, and Niger and Kogi and all of those, we have a lot of land mass which lies far low, we're not tapping out of all the solid minerals, we're not maximizing the agriculture, we're not taking advantage of. There's a lot of dead weight. A lot of dead weight and irrelevant stuff. So essentially, the New Central, we have 70 times the land mass that Lagos has, 70 times. Okay, I'll still ask another question. Maybe Lagos has more minerals, maybe it's solid minerals. Let's have a look at that. So think about this, solid minerals, what does that look like? That's what Lagos State has. Silica sand, sharp sand, gravel, and laterite. In fact, guys, do you know <laughs> <laughs> Think about this for a minute, and then contrast with that. Contrast. I don't even have sand on there, because we have sand. There's no space for me to put sand. <laughs> so zircon, calcium, I mean, name it. It's an abundance. We're sat in an area that's got so much, but yet we do not have the capacity or the mental capacity, the temerity, to take advantage of. And that's why we stay where we are. In Lagos, every square mile is maximized. The population, they take advantage of. Let's go further. Anyway, so it's definitely not solid mineral. Let's go further and have a look. So just to recap, what have I shown you? Just to recap real quick. Revenue, 301 for Lagos. 50 for six North Central States, population 9 to 18, land mass that much. Now, guys, I'll just take it one level further. I like to do forensics. It's a very personal passion of mine. I like to look at numbers and fully understand it. Be with me here. I want to take the average panshak, the average nanli, the average devil or gang who sat here in Joss, okay? The average Atta in Kugi. I want to compare the average Atta to the average Femi in Lagos. All right, so let's do that comparison. How productive is one of the guys sat here in jail? How productive is the computer guy in Lagos? Quickly, so this is IGR. So guys, stay with me. This is revenue generated per person. The amount of money this guy, a gang or a Chinan would generate and contribute to Plateau State, okay? Relative to how much a guy in Lagos would contribute. Stay with me. The average man in Lagos contributes 33,000 to the IGR. The average man in Jaws contributes 2,000. Look at the disparity. Now, let me even add another complexity into it. Let me assume that average man, that average gang, is a guy in the civil service. What does he take home as minimum wage? 18,000. So gang takes 18,000 from the government. Gang gives back 2,000 as his productivity. So already, you're shafted. Already, you are shafted because you're running on a massive, massive deficit. Gang is dead weight. Gang is not contributing. 
with all due respect, Panchak or Panle. Compare that to Femi, Femi 33K. 18K, you do the math, Femi puts 14,000 back. Femi is given back into the system. Conceptualize, conceptualize. What this says, unfortunately, and I know with all due respect, lots of people have spoken about potential and plateau. It means if I'm an investor, I'd rather put my one Naira in Lagos because there's more, it's likely for it to generate 16 times the return than it would do in Joss. That's just a fact of life. That's what it means. Now, guys, I'm saying this because it's important. It's important for us to think, to conceptualize, what can I do? You're sat here today in this particular office. What can you do to close that delta? That's the big question. All right, so let's go further. Now, again, the same internally generated revenue, but by square kilometer. Because why? I want to understand, if I go out here and I stand in Air Force Boys and I draw a line from Air Force Boys all the way to JIB Junction, I take another line all the way to Abattoir, take another square and I come back, so one square kilometer. I want to understand what the contribution of that square kilometer is to our IGR. Does that make sense? So let's do that quickly. Same thing, millions of Naira, let's understand that. Every square K in Lagos is worth 90 million. Every square K in Jos is less a fifth of 1 million. Because a million ever. It's not even up to 1 million. Everyone in Jos, a square kilometer, like I just told you, when you do the math, it's less than a million, 200, 200K. In Lagos, it's worth 90. Why am I saying this? This is really important because that means we're all poor sat here. Because in this ecosystem, this economy where we are, even if money exchanges hands in Abatua or in, in Kwampan, the magnitude of that sum is tiny. It's not going to be life-changing to you. But if you're sat in Shomolu in Lagos, if you're sat in Festac and money exchanges hands, that money has a lot more value than you have sat. I'm saying this from the point of view of think, conceptualize. What can you do? Okay? So that's the IGR. That's the numbers. You know, what this tells me is that in Plateau, okay, if you think about it from an agricultural point of view or solid mineral point of view, there's a lot of land that's just sat there and it's just fallow. They're not farming it, even if they are, it's not very productive. They're not exploiting the solid minerals, even if they are, you know, so think about that. There's lots of potential that we can exploit to close that delta. So how's Lagos doing it? We're coming to the closing. How is Lagos doing this? How is Lagos so efficient? How's Lagos doing it? Let's answer that quickly. So, again, in the context of Lagos' 301 billion, this is how it breaks down. Pay, pay as you earn. Can you see? So, Lagos pay as you earn, massive amount, over 100 million. Compare that to that of Plateau, you can see the number. Okay, other taxes, ministries, and other agencies, you can see the direct and growth tax. So, if I just stand here for a minute, just think about this. Pay as you earn, that is people, okay? People are, it's people's salaries, their taxes that they pay. What that tells you is, maybe Lagos is highly industrialized. Well, yes it is. Maybe Lagos has lots of startups, 100%. Lots of that money that you can see are coming from small startups, where people are working in small firms, but they're being paid, they pay their taxes to the government, government captures that tax, that's what grows an economy. In just how many startups have we got? In just how many incubators have we got? Incubating centers have we got? Think, think, think. Ministries, look at the contribution of ministries relative to what Lagos has got. We have all the ministries. Why are we not maximizing the capture of everything? So, companies are key. Like I said, startup, really important. Plugging the leakages within the ministries. If we can think about the ministries and how much money they're collecting, we can ultimately think about how we can maximize the collection of resources. Now, just on that point, let me just give you an anecdote. A couple of years ago, I was talking to somebody in Wasi, and what this guy said to me really blew my mind. There's a guy, just recently, all of you would know, just recently the government cracked down on because he was mining in Wasi. The guy was mining in Wasi, average take home a month, three billion. 3 billion naira every take home. Now, conceptualize that in the context of how much we get from the federal government. I think the last one was actually about 1.6 billion. That's what we get as subvention. 
this one man takes about three billion. Okay? So think about that for a minute. Okay, three billion. One guy he took three billion. But what he does is with the Chinese, they would mine lead and mine zinc. The zinc comes, they load the zinc into some trucks, ship that truck all the way to Lagos. Think about this. This zinc is from Zurak in Wase. This zinc is now in a car, it's going to the port to Lagos. Okay? It goes to Lagos, it goes to China. So think about this for a minute. Zinc from Plateau, now it's in China. Somebody in China is going to sort that zinc out. That man will be paid in China. That man will pay tax in China. The economy of China grows. Somebody takes that zinc, this NAMI process, he's going to polish it up. That man is paid a salary. He pays tax. Now he grows the economy. That zinc is going to be processed to the nth degree. At the end of the day, let me tell you what. That zinc that you took down, the person who mined it probably got paid 2,000 naira. And maybe we didn't even cap capture tax on it. The value of that zinc to the Chinese economy, I will assure you, will be north of a hundred hundred dollars at least. Okay, okay, two uh, two thousand. The Chinese have took a value of a hundred. Think about this. What can we do as a state? What can we do as citizens to maximize our takings? Anyway, going very quick. So, what can you do? Coming to the end of my slides, what can you do? Practical stuff. What can we do? The first thing I'd say, you know, everyone talks about this, and I'm sure lots of people have highlighted it. Agriculture. What does that mean, really? Tomato Joss. That's a small startup. Someone is doing this. I'm not making it up. Someone here in Joss is doing this. And she's profiting and making money. Okay? Let's go further. Jerry Isaac Malo. This guy single handedly built a tractor, single handedly built a rice processing mill. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. Single handedly committed himself, built this stuff. He's running, he's making money. Think. Let's go further. Vicampro, mechanized farming. Why not? Go into it. A fire potato and some things that are unique to Plateau. Potato is unique, strawberries, apples, all of that stuff. Take advantage. Next, what can we do? Start my own business. NHub comes to mind doing phenomenal stuff. And guys, I'm just putting it out there. You know, NHub comes to mind doing phenomenal stuff. They're paying taxes within here. It's still a small startup. They're not making life changing money, but the money's coming. Okay, so think what can you do? Uh, very quickly, again, Kim Coffee, a guy here in Joss, I understand, I don't know so much about it, but Kim Coffee is right here, you can go and buy stuff and monetize it. Uh, or you can start a very controversial blog, like I have done, you know, Viewpoint Nigeria. So, so guys, that's really the crux of my, my, my talk, but just in closing, I, I would say, it's, it's a great privilege to be sat here before you, and it really means a lot. But, I think as youth, we owe it to ourselves. I know the easiest thing for us to do is to look across the table and blame government, Bokui Hakaba, Bokui Hakaba. The onus actually lies on us. And I think you should think about what you can do to make things better. Thanks very much.